Hello and welcome in to another edition of River Dragons Weekly. I'm VP of Communications and play-by-play -play broadcaster Zach DeBozart. It was a very exciting weekend here in West Georgia last weekend. Hockey was finally back. You could feel the buzz in the air. The temperature started to cool down a little bit. Let you know that even though football was still going on, it's finally back. Hockey is back. Hockey season is upon us. Friday and Saturday night against the Elmira Enforcers. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Friday night's highlights here they are started up in the first period Jay Croup moving it in left wing side River Dragons have a chance but the enforcers they bring it back the other way pretty quickly Glenn Patterson he's gonna move it up to Stevens he fires it in and then you look at the weird bounce it took and Brandon Tucker gets an absolute gift that was Elmira's first goal of the season after they were shut out in both of their opening weekend games so one nothing Elmira leads in the first Columbus would get one back though Georgia power power play was on from the top. Wyatt Trumbly, one of the newest River Dragons, gave it up. Zach P sitting there in front of the net, banging away, and that's a hard working goal for Zach Pease. He got his second of the season right there and first on the weekend, ties up the game 1 1. However, 28 seconds later, off an offensive zone draw, Elmira, decent breakout play as Walters sets it up. In the neutral zone, it'll go. Patterson to Stevens, and then it'll drop. And look at Ahmad Mafu sitting right there. High slot and rips it top right corner. Referee adamantly pointing. River Dragons don't think it was in, but definitely hit the back bar. And it was 2-1 as we head to the second. Elmira would cash in with another one as Andrew Harrison. A little bit of a weird play. Popped up off his stick, off of Rutledge's stick, and just dropped into the net. Sometimes better to be lucky than good, but it falls into the net and the enforcers lead 3-1. However, it wouldn't last too much longer as a minute and four seconds later, you'll see David Pulowski, one of the newest River Dragons with a little bit of hard work behind the net. The puck's up there in the right point. Now here it comes behind the net, playing it off the back. Nice play to himself off the pads and Tim Santapalo right there, right place, right time to bury it. Just a minute and four seconds after Elmira made it a two goal game, it was now three to two. Moving into the third period, right off another face off offensive zone draw for the River Dragons. Kept couldn't be kept in the zone there, but then Levi Lynn, former Cottonmouth who was playing in this game, moves it up and look at MJ Graham moving in, high slot, five hole on Troy Passingham. We had a tie game with about 10 minutes left to go in the third period. The crowd was absolutely buzzing. We'll talk about them in a little bit, but we had to move all the way into overtime, killing off a little bit of four on three. Now off this draw back to a three on three, Levi Lynn got stalled out there by Tucker. It got played out to the neutral zone and El Myra on this breakout just would not be denied. Cameron Yarwood sending this one ahead. Tucker, little give and go with Yarwood. He'll drop it right back. And then Tucker from the left circle with all sorts of traffic in front of Rutledge buried it, made it 4-3 to three for the overtime win for the Elmira Enforcers. We'll get you ahead to Saturday's highlights with a special guest in a little bit. Columbus took one point in their home opener, and Elmira took two. Again, as we have to tell our fans with the different league and a different sort of scoring system, three points for the regulation win, two for the overtime win, one for the overtime loss, and one for the, or excuse me, and zero for the regulation loss. So with that, Elmira took two on the home opening night, and Columbus took one. A crowd of 4,116 saw this game where Elmira defeated Columbus 4-3, and even though the outcome might not have been what fans would have wanted, it was certainly amazing to see fans come out in droves like they did with high school football, college football still going on. It really shows you and shows us in the Columbus River Dragons offices that this is a hockey-hungry community. They've been waiting for this for two some odd years, and we thank each and every one of you. The 4,000 that were there Friday, plus the 2,500 or so that were in Saturday's game, so that's a, a full crowd out of about 6,600 over the first two days and we can't thank you guys enough for your support. It's why we're able to do stuff like this and it's why we were able to bring hockey back to West Georgia and don't worry in the next segment we'll talk about something a lot more fun that Saturday game uh, that certainly was a blast but looking back at that Friday game Brandon Tucker, he had two goals. He was named first star. MJ Graham and Chad Heron were named the second and third star, respectively, for the Columbus River Dragons. Of course, Graham had that goal to tie it up 3-3 in the mid-stages of the third period. And Chad Heron, he also picked up the helper on that. MJ Graham, Chad Heron, and Jay Krupp have been forming 
quite a serious line for head coach Gary Gill and Jerome Beachart as they've been doing a lot of damage in the early parts of this season and really forcing teams to pay attention when they're out there on the ice. Still a very dangerous team up and down the lineup though because you saw Zach Pease got a goal in this one. So too did Tim Sanapalo. The scoring up and down the lineup, it's a very deep team and I think it's something that Columbus certainly appreciates. I know I appreciate it because it seems like anybody in the roster, uh, one to 16, can put in a goal at any given time and come up big when needed to. So the Friday game didn't go the way of the Columbus River Dragons, but as we look around the league, on that particular night, the Carolina Thunderbirds defeated the Delaware Thunder 7-2 on that day. The Thunderbirds, the main southern rival uh, for the River Dragons, and of course in the Western Division as well. The Watertown Wolves defeated Port Huron on Friday 7-4, so that helps out in the Western Division battle. So too did the result in Battle Creek, with the Menor Icebreakers defeating the Rumblebees 7-2, but the Danville Dashers, they remained perfect with a 5-3 win over the Danbury Hattricks. We'll talk a little bit more about the results this weekend and the games coming up this week later on in the show. But again, for fans, we're in the Western Division with the Carolina Thunderbirds, Danville Dashers, Battle Creek Rumblebees, and the Port Huron Prowlers. Speaking of those Prowlers, we'll be up in Port Huron the next two weekends, taking on the Prowlers in four games, two weekends, two games each weekend. And remember, you can catch each and every one of them on our flagship station, WRCG 92.1 FM and 1420 AM. We've got to take a break here on River Dragons Weekly, but when we come back, we'll be joined by a very special guest who had a pretty big hand in Saturday night's win. Don't go anywhere. You'll see who that is and see more highlights after this. Don't don't go anywhere. Hmm, golden corrals, carved New York strip, and jumbo butterfly shrimp. Make me feel like a real New Yorker. Hey, I'm eating here. <laughs> New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Golden corral, the only one for everyone. Francis Marion, better known as the Swamp Fox, a guy known for his guile, his unorthodox methods, the first militia man. He was crafty before craft even existed. F. Marion Continental Whiskey has its own crafty and cunning instincts. A spirit that's bold but smooth. This is a premium, small batch American whiskey that punches well above its weight. Enjoy Swamp Fox F. Marion Continental Whiskey at all River Dragon home games. At Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash that a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment, that building homes is just as important as powering them. That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. There's a lot to love about fall, like the cool weather, watching the game, or streaming your favorite movies with fast and reliable internet and Wi-Fi. Fall is the perfect time to make the change to Beam with no data caps, all your favorite channels, and fast speeds. Call or visit us online at ctvbeam.com to get the perfect package for your needs and make your fall even better. Whether you're heading to an off-road destination, creating the perfect lawn, or preparing the fields, think SunSouth, where you'll find quality John Deere equipment, affordably priced to help you tackle the tough jobs. Think SunSouth, for those that do. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overbee Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. We just took a look at Friday's highlights from the game against Elmira. Now, let's take a look at Saturday. We've got another extra time affair. Starting up in the first period, Elmira got it going same exact time they did 15, excuse me, 5.30 into the first period. You're going to see Kyle Stevens move the puck in here. And Mafu's left circle shot. Rutledge got a piece of it, didn't get all of it. Pops behind him. And Elmira is able to bury it. Again, 5 minutes, 30 seconds into the first. They lead 1-0. Columbus would be able to respond, though. Face-off play, 4-on-3 advantage here. 
and Yanni Liarakos goes circle to circle. Puck's going to move its way around. Liarakos is going to fire a shot that hits Murdoch on the chest. And Krupp, nice job with the hand-eye coordination, pumping up the crowd after he bangs that one home to tie it up. One to one through 20 minutes. Now we move to the second. Elmira, they jump out early in this second period. Big hit on Wyatt Tremblay in the neutral zone. He has to head to the bench. Three on one the other way. And Nicholas sets up Gavin Yates for the goal, making it two to one. Those two would combine later on in the game. More on that later. First, a Columbus chance coming up here. And look at this. Weaving into the zone, dropping it back. And Zach Pease getting his second of the weekend. Nice little give and go play there after Elmira getting a little bit slow with the puck. We were tied through 40 minutes as we head on into the third. MJ Graham took a penalty for the River Dragons, so we're on the penalty kill here, but David Pulowski, one of the newest River Dragons, bringing it in shorthanded, takes it behind the net. Now Liarakos finds it, and they decide, all right, let's play a little four corners, kill the rest of this off. Elmira, seeing the four corners, says, all right, let's take a change, and Seth Gustin heads up play, finds Pulowski all alone on a breakaway, and he buries it blocker side. It's 3-2 with less than 10 minutes to go in the third. Elmira would not go away, though. As we mentioned, Nicholas and Yates, those two would combine a turnover in the neutral zone. This time it's Yates feeding Mick. Nicholas with a nice pad pass off of Jared Rutledge. Nicholas buries it with about seven and a half to go in the third, and we are tied. Overtime now. It needs overtime for the second straight night, and Elmira thinks they have the winner coming up. It's a four-on-three opportunity after a Zach Pease penalty late in the overtime, and Gavin Yates drops it off to Mafuz. They play a little catch, and then watch this coming up right here. Brandon Tucker on the back door, points for it, wants it, sticks out his foot and kicks it in. Referee immediately says no goal, and so with 15.8 seconds left, we remain tied. We move to a shootout in the fifth all the way to the fifth. First four go scoreless. Skinner buries one here, and now we're back to Jay Krupp. Bottom of the fifth. Needs to score here to extend the game. Taking his time, looking where he wants to go, and just buries it. Top right corner, past Murdaka, and we play on into extras in the shootout. Top six, Skinner again, rang that one off the post. So now we're going to go right back to the well and Jay Krupp with a chance to win it. Look at all these stick moves coming up. Couple from the blue line, slows it up Patty Kane style, and then about five or six to go backhand, bar down, and get the win. Pumping up the crowd and the River Dragons pick up their first home win in team history in shootout fashion over the Elmira Enforcers. And we're pleased to be joined on set by one of the heroes of that game, the first star of the game, Jay Krupp. Jay, thanks for taking the time. Let's start right away with the impact you made. That power play goal, batting it out of the air. You played a little baseball, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm a big softball guy during the summer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Gilly uh, called out a power play line for that four on three. And um, I told the guys, we, you know, we were down a goal. And we, we started pushing a little bit, getting uh, some energy going. I said, let's get, get the puck to the net on this shift. And, uh, you know, that's kind of my uh, my office, picking up garbage goals, tips, and, and, and uh, you know, batting that one. I knew if we could get the puck to the net that we'd have a chance to uh, tie the game, and that's what we did. Four on three, a lot of space to work there, too, so gave you time to, to get it in and tied up the game. It was a big spot there, but then obviously a much bigger spot comes up. After the overtime, we killed off a little bit, about 20-some-odd seconds with the four on three. Had to do that for the second straight night. Then we moved to the shootout, and before we even get into your goals, I'm curious, were you always slated to go fifth, or was it sort of a kind of pick um, and choose, you know, yeah. by, by a gut feeling? No, yeah, I told, uh, I asked our coaches, and again, shootouts are another one of my strengths and um, you know um, coaches that have coached me have known that so right away Gilly looked at me and I said ah uh, I said I like I like the game winners because uh, that's kind of like you know I know I can end it and and um, do my thing and so I told Gilly I said give me whatever number the game winner is well <laughs> we got to the fifth where we needed to go and he said I need you I said okay went down and, and buried it and then I went right back to the bench and I told Gilly I said uh, I'm going again. Yeah because that's one of the things that fans might not know. First it's a five-man shootout yeah. in this league and then after the five you can repeat. So I tell right. you what Jay let's head to the highlight right back to it and let's have you uh, walk us through what you were feeling. This one coming up right here uh, this is going to be your fifth attempt, the, the bottom of the fifth mm -hmm. attempt. So it's your first after we see Skinner uh, go and bury it again. So here comes your fifth you're taking your time. You're staring them down. What are you thinking right here? Um, I, I like slowing it down because, you know, it makes the goalie get impatient and kind of get out of their groove. And um, that shot, that high glove, 
I practice it quite a bit <laughs> in practice, and I knew that was going to be my go-to move the first time. So now you're going again after you saw Skinner hit the pipe, and you obviously change it up. You slow it down a little bit. You put a lot of stick handles into it. Yeah. Again, thought process. Um, I was thinking he's definitely think I'm going glove. So I'm going to try and bait him to think I'm going glove and then and, uh, and go uh, block her side with it. And uh, that's what I did and came it, through. It was a pretty goal. You're obviously hyped up here, but then I want to let this roll for just a little bit longer because then <laughs> something else happens here. You're all hyped up. The crowd's going wild. Yeah. And you fall into the penalty yeah. box. That, that might have been unexpected, eh? Yeah, yeah. No, I, was, I saw the guys coming out of the bench and uh, getting ready to uh, pile up. And I just kept going backwards where, to where I thought the glass and boards were gonna be. And the guy in the penalty box actually came in the tunnel after the game and apologized. He's like, I didn't think you were coming in front of the door. And I said, I didn't really know where I was on the ice at the time. I was just waiting for the boys, you know? So that was pretty funny because I just went down and I was like, where am I? And all the boys were already laughing. I could see them laughing. So uh, it was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, kind of funny little end to it. And, uh, you know, you could see the smiles on the faces, guys, uh, you know, from the camera angle when that happens. So yeah, it, it was, was fun. It, it was great. It's a great way to finish the weekend, too. You split the points with Elmira, so you take two on Saturday night, one on Friday night. Again, a three-point league as we're having to educate fans. It's a different system uh, in the federal league here. But you take three points out of six, and more importantly, you had over 6,000 people show up across the first two games, uh, 4,000 on Friday night and about 2,500 on Saturday night. It was a great showing, especially while football season is going on. Really tell us and I, I think shows the players that you know this is a hockey hungry city they've missed it yeah definitely uh, I you know could tell just by saying here this past summer uh, this was a hockey city and I think um, you know they're pumped to have hockey back and and as as well as we are pumped to be here and and uh, do something special in Columbus. Not only did you have a phenomenal game on Saturday, a couple of points, a couple of shootout goals, you had the first goal in team history, that power play ringer uh, in Delaware, and uh, your father is one of the owners of the team. That had to be a pretty special moment for you. Yeah, it was cool. I a uh, couple times talked to, brought it up to my dad and, and my girlfriend over uh, over the summer. I was like, you know, what if I get the first <laughs> one? And uh, I, I really didn't think you know, I never thought that going into the game. I was just like, I got to do my job, go finish hits, and and uh, you know, bring energy to the team. But got out on the power play and got that pass, and realized I had a lot of time. And my eyes kind of lit up when I saw that top corner. And uh, Harry was kind of screening the goalie, so I let it fly, and it went in. All right, last one for you here. We're almost out of time for this segment, but what do you think of this team that's been built so far? You've had two weekends. You split points on both weekends, but it's a brand new team, a lot of new guys playing with each other. I mean, how do you feel about it going in? Because now we got back-to-back -back weekends coming up in Port Huron. Uh, I feel really, really good about what we have going on, and um, I think we're just going to keep climbing the mountain and going up and getting better and better. And, um, you know, I think we're going to be a very, very tough team to beat come April. All right. Thanks for your time, Thank Jay. You. Appreciate it. And when we come back on River Dragons Weekly, we'll talk about those upcoming two weekends back to back against the Port Huron Prowlers, a divisional foe in this Western Division. We'll tell you all about that and more coming up. River Dragons Weekly rolls on after this break. Let's Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. The best damn spirits in the world. We say that because we care about what we do. The premium quality of our spirits doesn't come from some secret recipe or magic water. It comes from our desire to craft the best damn spirits in the world. Swamp Fox Distilling Company. Premium, small batch spirits made with pride in Buena Vista, Georgia. Now available at your favorite local package store. 
There's a lot to love about fall, like the cool weather, watching the game, or streaming your favorite movies with fast and reliable internet and Wi-Fi. Fall is the perfect time to make the change to Beam with no data caps, all your favorite channels, and fast speeds. Call or visit us online at ctvbeam.com to get the perfect package for your needs and make your fall even better. New York strip and jumbo butterfly shrimp. Make me feel like a real New Yorker. Hey, I'm eating here. <laughs> New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Golden Corral, the only one for everyone. Whether you're heading to an off-road destination, creating the perfect lawn, or preparing the fields, think SunSouth, where you'll find quality John Deere equipment, affordably priced to help you tackle the tough jobs. Think SunSouth, for those that do. Welcome back into River Dragons Weekly. Our big thanks to Jay Krupp, who joined us on the show to talk about that Saturday night win. It was an unbelievable game, back and forth the whole way. Went all the way to the shootout. Can't ask for much more drama than that, especially in the regular season. And Krupp with a couple of points, plus the two shootout goals. That's right, two. After the fifth round, you can repeat. Just these sort of little quirks that uh, take some getting used to, but don't worry. This league is going to be a lot of fun for fans, and we hope you come out to our next game, which will be not this Friday or the next Friday, but Friday after that, we take on the Carolina Thunderbirds in our first matchup in the Southern rivalry that this Federal League has created for us. Thunderbirds come to us on Friday, and then the River Dragons will head to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to play against Carolina on Saturday. Other games that happened on that Saturday night after we concluded, those Carolina Thunderbirds completed a weekend sweep of the Delaware Thunder 5-1. to one. That means Carolina is a perfect 4-0 and so far to start the season. Also perfect in the Western Division of the Danville Dashers after they swept Danbury. On Saturday night, they finished them off 6-2. to two. Watertown Wolves beat the Port Huron Prowlers 5-1. to one. That's our next opponent coming up at Port Huron. We'll talk about them in a little bit. And then the Menor Icebreak they beat the Battle Creek Rumblebees five to nothing. A shutout for the Menor Icebreakers in this early part of the season. We saw Carolina shut out Elmira twice in the opening weekend, and now another shutout here uh, with Battle Creek suffering one at home. But now the River Dragons look ahead to not one, but two straight weekends in Port Huron. A little bit of a scheduling quirk as it were, but doesn't bother the River Dragons too much at all. They love to go on the road and be able to take on teams in their own barn. Port Huron Prowlers, they're a very top-heavy team, at least from what they were last year. There are guys like Dalton Jay, Matt Graham, and Matt Robertson who do a lot of the heavy lifting on points. And then there is player-slash-coach Joe Pace Jr., who really runs the back end of things on the blue line. You'll see him eat up a lot of minutes for the team. And really, once you get past those, it makes you wonder what else does Port Huron have and how Columbus, with the depth that we've talked about, so many guys different scoring, how will they match up? Sure, Port Huron might have one of the more talented top lines in the league, but after that, you go to lines two and three. You know the River Dragons absolutely hang with anybody. And to be honest with you, the River Dragons' top line seems to change week to week just depending on who's active. And that, to me, screams very well of a deep and strong team that the River Dragons have in front of them this season. Talking about that top line for Port Huron, well, Matt Robertson in four games played already has eight points, four goals, four assists, averaging a goal and a helper a game. That's certainly going to draw some eyes to you when you're on the ice. Matt Graham and Dalton Jay, the two other guys we talked about, they're at six points respectively, each with two goals and four assists. And then it's a little bit of a drop off. You see Justin Portillo at one goal, two assists for three points. Matt Stoya, a new Port Huron Prowler, also has three points. And then when you look at their goaltending situation, Chris Paulin, who wears the number 31, you could probably expect to see a lot of him uh, in this weekend and probably in the next weekend too when Columbus and Port Huron take each other on. He has played 181 minutes, so that's a little over three games out of the four Port Huron has played so far. Chris Pollan has a 2-1 record and a 3.98 goals against average, 902 save percentage. So it'll be very interesting to see how those numbers hold up after Columbus plays them again, not once, but two straight weekends. Also, during that first Port Huron weekend, it will be the Prowlers' home opening night 
in McMoran Arena. So I expect a very loud and raucous crowd should create a great environment. You can find it through the port here on Prowler's partner, ebw.tv, to watch the game. But of course, you can always listen to the radio calls from myself anywhere the team goes on our flagship station through PMB Broadcasting. That's WRCG 92.1 FM and 1420 AM. So we know Columbus is heading up to Port Huron. How about the other games happening this weekend? On Friday, the Elmira Enforcers, the team we just got finished with, take on the opponent we played the first time around. The Delaware Thunder make their first trip up to Elmira. Carolina Thunderbirds also open up at home against the Danbury Hattricks. The men are Icebreakers and Battle Creek Rumblebees. They play each other again in back-to-back -back weekends, though this time they switch locations. They'll start in Battle Creek on Friday and then play in Menor for their home opener on Saturday. And then Watertown is at Danville. That's 8.05 puck drops because the Dashers are the only team in the central time zone in this league. That starts up a two-game set there. Looking ahead to Saturday, the Thunderbirds and Hattricks again. Elmira will host the Thunder again. And as we mentioned, the Menor Icebreakers have their first home game on Saturday night in a home-and-home -home series with the Battle Creek Rumblebees. That'll just about do it for this week's edition of River Dragons Recap. I want to give a big thanks to Jay Croup, who joined us in on today's show, as well as the fine folks at CTV for helping us to put this together in their studios. And of course, all the River Dragons front office members who helped make this a possibility to bring this show to you every single week. I'm Zach DeBozart, the voice of the River Dragons. Remember, you can catch me Friday night on a 6.30 pregame show on WRCG. We'll be live from Port Huron Friday and Saturday this week and Friday and Saturday next week. River Dragons and Prowlers, four games over two weekends. It's going to be a lot of fun, going to be very physical. You know emotions are going to get heated when you see the same guys over and over again. Hey, it just so happened the schedule worked out that way, but I think it's going to make for all the more entertaining games, and it's going to be a lot of fun for you, the fans. So that'll do it for this edition of the show. I'm Zach DeBozart. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.